Nice to meet you. My name's Hosoda Tomoharu. I'm a second grader. In the end, the seventh person never appeared, huh? Seems like my story will be the last. So to liven things up, why don't we move somewhere else? We've waited this long and they never appeared, so I don't think the seventh person is coming. I think we'll be okay to step away for a bit. Well, everyone, please follow me. So this gathering is to commemorate the old school building that's about to be torn down, right? That's why I thought I'd tell a story about the old school. There's no better time, after all. We're not allowed inside anymore, but I don't think anyone will notice if we slip in. Plus, my story is about that building, after all. All right, the old school building. Everyone, are you ready? We're going to visit a certain classroom inside. It's dark, isn't it? There's no electricity, so of course it is. Watch your step. The floor is falling apart, after all. It makes a horrible sound when you step on it, doesn't it? Key, key, key. Like some kind of deep-seated grudge is crying out. All right, we'll he we're here. This is the classroom. Please, after you. Pick a seat and sit down. Okay, so let's begin my story. Kurata-san, have you heard any scary stories about the toilets in this building? There are lots of famous stories featuring toilets, aren't there? Like the voice that says, Give me some paper, followed by a pale hand that reaches out of the toilet bowl. Or the pair of glowing red eyes that peek out of the bottom of the toilet. There are all sorts of tales. But the most famous of all has to be Hanako-san, right? When you knock on the door, you hear Hanako-san's voice coming from what should be an empty toilet. Then, when you open the door, you see her standing there. Hanako-san's story is known all over Japan, although her name or appearance might change. Her gender and even name can be different. Sometimes her true nature and reasons for being are known, but in others, she's wrapped in mystery. But the one thing they all have in common is that she appears in the toilet. Mysterious spirits that exist in the toilets are thusly called Hanako-san. Then, as though it's only natural, rumours of her spread throughout the school. So now, I'd like to propose that we carry out an experiment to call forth that Hanako-san. How about it, Kurata-san? Do you want to try? Let's do it. There could be no other answer. I thought you'd agree. Well then, before we visit the toilet Hanako-san is said to be in, please listen to my story. This took place several decades ago now. That's why we can no longer confirm whether it's actually true or not. It might be a true story, but it could also potentially be a fake. Well, we'll go and see with our own two eyes soon enough anyway. It all began in this classroom. It was right around this time of year as well. A humid summer's day. The students who had failed their end-of-term tests all gathered here. They had to do some extra printouts to make up for it. How about it, Kurata-san? 
Have you ever failed a test before? No. Heh, that's amazing. I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean it's rare for me not to fail. I'm jealous. Anyway, back to the story. There were six students who stayed behind. Exactly like those of us here now. There were four boys and two girls. Wiping the sweat from their faces as they worked in this very room with no air conditioner. They quietly worked on their sheets after school. A teacher occasionally dropped by to check on them. But then, something suddenly came up and the teacher had to leave. So they asked one of the other teachers to watch over the students instead. That was a problem. The teacher they asked agreed without thinking too much about it. They went home forgetting about the six students still in the school. And, for some reason, it seemed that the janitor on patrol didn't notice them either. According to what I later heard, he definitely patrolled the building, but he said nobody was in there when he did. Was he lying? Or was some other power at work that hid them from sight for just a moment? At any rate, the six of them were forgotten and left behind in this classroom. By the way, Kurata-san, you haven't been to the toilet once yet. Are you okay? Haven't you ever said that you need to go to the toilet before? No. Oh, really? That's for the better. So, the six students who stayed behind waited and waited, but the teacher in charge didn't return to see them, so they began to grow worried. It was important catch-up work for their end-of-term tests, so they couldn't just up and leave. And yet, each of them had their own things to deal with. If they failed again, then they wouldn't be able to take part in club activities anymore or their parents would be called to school. And so, they couldn't go home. They looked up at the clock, and it was already past 9pm. But that was also strange. Why hadn't they noticed that it was 9pm? Even if they'd been concentrating hard on their work, these were kids that had to be doing makeup work in the first place. Do you really think they could concentrate on something for that long? Don't you think it's odd that they wouldn't notice the time until it was already past 9pm? I don't think so. Seriously? They were there the whole time after class. They had to be hungry. And it was dark outside as well. And yet, not a single one of the six noticed anything. No matter how you look at it, it's strange. If that's how you think, then you must have just picked any answer. Or you're making fun of me. How rude. And here I am telling you a serious story. I'm asking you kindly. Please, don't break the mood. Anyway, everyone started to think that it was strange. At that point, someone should have suggested that they go home. But no one said anything. They thought it was strange, but they continued working under the dim lights above. Even so, their revision printouts sure did take them a long time to finish. They were a gang of kids who failed their original tests, sure. I've had to do the same myself, so I understand, but 
Even for someone with marks as bad as me, I don't think the extra work is that difficult. That's how bad they were. Or maybe things were harder in the past. The clock passed 10 p.m. As you might expect, one of them grew impatient. Hey, do you think they've forgotten about us? It was the one question none of them wanted to hear. The remaining five exchanged glances. No way. There's no way the teachers would leave us here. One of them answered in spite of himself. He wasn't very confident in that answer himself, but he didn't want to believe they'd been left behind like that, and so he answered. I can understand how he felt. If so, then why haven't they come yet? It's already past ten. Then he pointed to the clock on the classroom wall. More importantly, have you guys finished your extra work? If so, then I'll just go and get the teacher myself. One of the girls said forcefully, trying to break the unease in the room. Yeah, we could do that too. Everyone went back to their work. But still they weren't finished. It was like they were repeating the same questions over and over again. It wasn't that difficult, so why weren't they finished? Answer after answer. The questions seemed to go on forever. Looking at the clock, it was still only 20 past 10. It felt like a lot more time had passed, but barely any time had passed at all. Then, a short while later, the clock still said 20 past 10. Hey, do you think that clock stopped? The other girl whispered helplessly. It was something they were all worried about. It was that clock over there. Look, that clock on the wall, right there. Can you see it in the dark? What time do you think it says right now? It says 20 past 10. The hands on the clock always point to 20 past 10. What do you think? Do you want to look closer at it? Let's check it out. Come on, let's take a closer look. You saw it, right? It's just a plain old regular clock. Although it is pretty dusty. Have a look inside. There are no batteries in it anymore. That's why it doesn't move. But this clock is strange. Like, you can move the hands, right? But if you do, at some point, the hands will return to 20 past 10 again. I don't know why. Maybe someone moves them. But the hands always point to 20 past 10 and never move from that spot, even without batteries. Well then, let's get back to the story. The remaining six students also decided to check the clock. They thought the clock had to be broken too. Then, as one of them removed it from the wall, Ah! The other five screamed in unison. There was a stain on the wall where the clock had been in the shape of a human face. For a second, it looked like a skull. But, looking closer, it was just a stain. Don't scare me like that. The person who took the clock down quickly put it back. They were more concerned with hiding that creepy stain than checking the clock. 
At that moment, one of the students stood up out of his chair. Um, I'm going to go to the toilet. He really must have been holding it in. He fidgeted on the spot. Of course, nobody stopped him, and it would be strange if anyone did try to stop him. And yet, he looked at everyone's faces, apparently feeling like he shouldn't go. That's right, he was scared to go alone. It was already late in the empty, quiet, old school building. The only people there were the six of them. Anybody would be scared to go to the toilet alone in that old building. But nobody offered to go with him. And so, he went by himself. He went down the long, dark hall that, even then, he felt like he might fall through. The other five struggled with their extra work, hoping to finish as soon as they could. But that stain behind the clock weighed on their minds, and they couldn't focus. Hey, don't you think we've been here long enough? None of us have finished our printouts, so the teacher won't get mad at us. I'm going to go get them. Unable to bear it any longer, one of them decided to wrap things up. Nobody disagreed. Yeah, let's do that. When he gets back from the toilet, let's all go see the teacher together. Everyone nodded in agreement. But he didn't return. No matter how long they waited, he didn't return. The clock on the wall had stopped, so nobody knew how much time had passed. Fear ruled their minds, and as the time passed in silence, it felt even longer than usual. In reality, no more than two or three minutes had probably passed. The uncomfortable silence continued. I'm going to go find him, one of the boys said as he flew from the classroom. Hey! They called out after him, but he was already gone. The sounds of the floor creaking got further away. The remaining four looked at each other. They were all scared. It was an indescribable fear, as though they'd be led astray into an entirely different world. Even though if they left the building and passed through the school gates, they should find the normal world waiting for them. And yet, it strangely felt as though they wouldn't be able to leave that building. Looking at each other, they all understood. They understood that they were all thinking the exact same thing. Then it happened. They heard a pained scream tearing through the silence. They all gulped down the saliva that had built up in their throats. I wonder what happened. They listened closer to the direction the voice had come from. Let's just go already. I don't care about this anymore. Then one of the girls suddenly burst into tears. It was like the thread keeping her together had snapped. She bawled her eyes out, surprising the others. And yet, they didn't care. That's right. Let's get out of here. I think we should go home as well. The teacher is the real problem, leaving us here so late. The other girl said as she rubbed the crying girl's back. That's right. I think so too. We should leave. One of the boys chimed in at her words. But one of them disagreed. But we can't just leave the others behind. At the very least, we heard someone scream. Aren't we going to go for help? 
For sure, leaving a friend behind would be awkward. The two who hadn't returned were their classmates after all. Hey, Kurata-san. We're friends, right? If you'd like, would you like to be my friend? Sure. Thanks. That makes me happy. From the moment I met you, I thought we'd be friends. I'll never betray you. From this moment forward, let's be friends. Yeah. That's what friends are. Of course, I'd never leave you behind either. The others felt the same, but one of them was unwilling. That's what you say, but it could just be a bad joke. They're probably waiting somewhere for us to come find them before they jump out and scare us. That's why I'm telling you we shouldn't go. On the contrary, I think they should suffer a little. But the guy who first suggested they go help refused to change his mind. Even if you're not going, I am. If it is a joke, then it'll still set my mind at ease. But if it isn't a joke, then... What are you going to do if something really did happen to them? If you want to go, then go. But I'm not. Do whatever you want. I'm going. At a time like this, they really should have stuck together. But they got into a fight over nothing. Only one courageous friend decided to go and check the toilets for himself. Even though the girls had agreed, in the end, they were too scared. The other three decided to go find the teacher, in the teacher's room instead. Hey, Kurata-san, which story would you like to hear the end of? The brave friend who went to the toilet. Yeah, I definitely thought you'd want to hear that one. He wanted to search the toilets, but... There are only three toilets in the old school building. The classroom we're in right now is on the first floor. Which toilets do you think he went to? The third floor. First, he checked the toilets on the first floor. Of course, it's normal he'd check the toilets closest to the classroom first. But he could see from afar that the lights weren't on. Then, as he got closer, he heard what sounded like a voice coming from upstairs. He couldn't hear the murmuring very well, but it was definitely somebody's voice. He went upstairs. The only thing he could hear was the sound of his own footsteps, which wasn't very comforting. The other three must have gone to see the teacher by that point. While worried about the others, he tried to fight off the fear creeping into his own heart. The voice sounded like it was on the third floor. He checked the toilets on the second floor, just in case, but the lights were also off there. They had to be on the third floor. They were up there, talking about something. If they were discussing something, it could only be about one thing. How to scare the others when they came to help. As he thought about it, he grew angry. He started to regret not going to the teacher's room with the other three, and he grimaced. But he had come all this way, so he thought about turning the tables on them instead. He slowly, slowly climbed the stairs. 
he could hear the voices above. No matter how you try to climb the stairs, you can't get rid of the sound of your footsteps. The wood creaked each time his feet pressed down, and the oppressive sound echoed all around. So he focused his nerves on listening instead. He tried to figure out where the other two were. Because everything was dark, it was easy to focus on listening instead. Then, covering his own footsteps, he worked out their location from their voices. They were in the shadows, right at the top of the stairs. Realising that, he prepared himself as he got closer to the third floor. He stopped right before the last step and took a deep breath. Wah! He screamed. But nobody was there. There was no sign of the duo who should have been there, and the voices he'd heard had stopped as well. Fear washed over him once more. Then he remembered. The tales of Hanako-san, who was said to appear in the third floor toilets. Apparently, Hanako-san appeared in different places at the time, depending on how she felt. Although apparently she could usually be found in the second stall from the end. Sometimes she was in different ones, however, so you could never let your guard down. He went inside. He heard the sound of crying from what should have been an otherwise empty toilet. He knocked three times, and someone inside knocked three times back. This time, he knocked once. He got one knock in return. Then, Is anyone there? He asked. But there was no answer. He found it strange that there was no response, so he went to open the door and found it wasn't locked. He flung the door open, but nobody was inside. Finding it strange, he closed the door. This time, there was a knock from the other side of the door. Three times, Kong, Kong. Kong. But nobody was in there. Then, sensing something strange, he looked up. In the gap above the door, the pale face of a girl with a bob cut was looking down at him. It was said that if she looks at you, then you would die within three days. That's the story of Hanako-san, from our old school building. He suddenly remembered that fact. But it was okay. Hanako-san only appeared in the girls' toilets. He would be fine. He didn't think the two who disappeared could be in the girls' toilets. He went back out to the third floor, and when he glanced at the toilets, the lights weren't on. So, where on earth were they then? And what had that scream been? He suddenly grew scared being alone. At any rate, he couldn't help being alone, he told himself. And so, he decided to run. That was when it happened. The lights in the third floor toilets suddenly turned on. Someone was there. That was what he thought. It had to be those two. So they were trying to scare him after all. They were trying to give him the biggest scare of his life to make him even more fearful. Thinking that, he felt less scared than before. He swore to give them a piece of his mind and puffing his chest out, he approached the toilets. When they tried to scare him, he'd just laugh in their faces. Nobody was in the toilets. 
But all the doors were closed. They had to be inside one of them. There were four doors. Which do you think he opened? The door at the back. This door, right? He turned the handle and slowly opened the door. It wasn't locked. Nobody was inside. Well then, which do you think he opened next? The second from the end. This door next, right? He turned the handle and slowly opened the door. It wasn't locked. Nobody was inside. Only two doors left. Which do you think he opened? Third from the end. That's right, this door. He turned the handle and slowly opened the door. It wasn't locked. Nobody was inside. Only the last door left. He grabbed the handle of the last door. What was he going to do if they weren't inside? If this one was empty, then who turned on the lights? And where were they hiding? Nothing made any sense. His heart started beating wildly. Should he open it? Or should he leave it? He debated what to do. But if he didn't open it, then he wouldn't know. He tightly gripped the handle to stop his hand from shaking. Then he slowly turned it. That was when it happened. He heard a scream from somewhere. He suddenly let go of the handle. He ran in the direction of the voice. The scream continued. Was it a man? Or a woman? It was an unnerving scream that sounded like several people at once, not just a single person. It's coming from downstairs! The voice was coming from the floor below. He flew down the stairs and looked down the long hallway. Ah! He saw it. In the distance, the three who were supposed to go to the teacher's room were being dragged down the hall. They were still alive, screaming for help. He had no idea why they were here when they should have been in the teacher's room instead. Had they been attacked by something on the way? Something was most definitely dragging them, but he couldn't see what it was. There seemed to be several small black clumps of something, and that was what was dragging them. Wait! He chased after them. But he ran so fast that he tripped and fell. He hit his head hard. Ah! Rubbing the back of his head, his stomach dropped. His head was wet. His hair was soaked. Was it blood? He brought his wet finger to his nose. It definitely smelt like blood. He rubbed the back of his head again, but he realized there was no wound. Then he looked down the dim hall. It was covered in blood. It was a thick, single line like someone had run down the hall with a paint roller. It was the blood of the three who had been dragged away. Instinctively, he knew. Standing up and looking into the distance, the three who'd been dragged weren't moving. He couldn't hear them calling for help either. Were they dead? Or perhaps still alive? As they were being dragged to the end of the hall, they kept going around the corner. Then, they disappeared. There was another set of stairs around that corner. He quickly chased after them. He ran carefully 
so as not to slip on the blood this time. As he turned the corner, he found distinct evidence that the three of them had been dragged there. It looked just like a slug's trail. The trail extended up to the third floor. He chased after them in a daze. By the time he reached the third floor, he could no longer see them. But their blood stained the hall. He followed the trail. Where do you think it led? It led to the third floor girls' toilets. Not only that, but the lights were on. He swallowed nervously. If he wanted to run, he could have. But he didn't. Maybe he felt like he was a hero on a TV show. He slowly followed the blood trail and stood before the girls' toilets. The toilets were silent. He could no longer believe that this was just a trick by the other two. They really must have been hiding in that last door he didn't open. Even now. He realised how stupid that thought was. The blood trail continued inside the toilets. The lights inside shone vibrantly. They were oddly bright. Blood coated the floor. Three separate trails combined into one thick line. The thin gaps in the thick line was proof that the three had combined. The trail went on clearly. Right into the second stall from the end. The stall Hanako-san was said to be in. There wasn't a single sound. The toilets in the old school building were also extremely narrow. No matter which way you looked at it, there was no way for three people to fit in there. But looking at the blood, what else could he think? Hey, Kurata-san, what do you think he did? Do you think he opened the door to Hanako-san's stall? He did. That's right. He stood in front of that stall like it was inviting him in. Then he grabbed the handle. It felt oddly heavy. But as he gripped it, it only felt heavy at first and the door opened easily. Then... The door opened, but nobody was inside. The blood trail from the second floor suddenly stopped right in the middle of the stall. Inside was empty. Then he felt something cold on his cheek. Rain? There was no way it could be rain. He was inside the old school building. Finding it suspicious, he looked up. They were there. The five classmates, who were doing the makeup class with him, were stuck to the roof, covered in blood. Then he saw a girl with a bob cut, blood covering her uniform, clinging to one of them and glaring down at him. He couldn't make out her face, because she was wearing something like a white no-mask. He couldn't make out any expressions. Stakes had been driven into the other five, pinning them to the roof. She clung to the dead bodies, as though giving herself to them. He was speechless. He couldn't scream, and his eyes were glued to the strange side above him. That was the last thing he remembered. The next moment, the masked woman on the roof started rustling like a spider and jumped down to attack him. Then he thought something. Just what were those small black things that had dragged the other three away? Even though he was about to die, he still wondered such pointless thoughts. We all probably think something stupid right as we're about to die, huh? 
So then, what happened to those six? They never found them. The next day, the teacher who was supposed to be watching them, and the teacher they asked after, went looking for them before the problem grew any larger. But not only did they not find any bodies, they didn't even find a single drop of blood. Then they agreed to say that they'd sent the kids home for the day. How cruel, right? Then the students disappeared. Nobody ever saw any of them after that. But their classmates knew that the six of them stayed behind to do extra work at school. Then strange rumours started to spread after they disappeared. People said they heard strange screams coming from the girls' toilets on the third floor, and others saw the missing students there. All sorts of strange rumours went around. Then people started to claim that it was Hanako-san's curse. Hanako-san had taken the six of them away. Nobody knows whether they were spirited away to another world, or whether it was really Hanako-san's curse. And that's the end of my story regarding the old school building. Nobody ever saw the six get killed, so it doesn't seem like it could be real, right? But I don't think it was a lie. How about it? Let's go up to the girls' toilets on the third floor and call Hanako-san right now. Kurata-san, you said before that you'd go, right? Or did your feelings change after hearing my story? What are you going to do? You'll go, right? Let's go to the girls' toilets. I'm glad. You really are my friend. No, I already think of you as a best friend. Let's solve the mystery of Hanako-san and get you a great article to write. Then I can be proud about it as well. Even if I die too. Well then, let's go. At that moment... Kya! As we went to stand up, a dazzlingly bright light washed over us. It's so bright. What on earth is it? Ah! What's happening? What's happening? 